Well, I must admit it surprised me. Tonight, we're seeing all over this nation, all cities and all parts of the country, indeed across the world, an outpouring of joy, of hope, renewed faith, and tomorrow, bring a better day. President-elect Biden saw it. And that's not just political rhetoric. I bet if you're watching the news, you saw it too. These celebrations around our nation, across the globe, the streets of major U.S. cities like Washington, D.C., of course, our capital, New York, the singing, the dancing, the cheering, the end of this era. There were also celebrations abroad, places like Paris, where the actual church bells were ringing. Listen to that. That doesn't happen for every election. That was the reaction there to Mark Trump losing, Joe Biden becoming our president-elect, or take London. Fireworks were set off, celebrating the historic win. Let's take this in. Millions of people in dozens and dozens of countries stopping to reflect on what we did, what you did here in America yesterday. And then there's another one here from a longtime ally, Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu, going out of his way to very clearly and graciously congratulate Biden and Harris. And now we go from global reaction to a true global icon. We're about to speak with the actress, director, and activist Eva Longoria. She worked tirelessly with the Biden campaign. You may remember her, of course, from that starring role hosting the first night of the DNC this year. We should also mention she was on the ground in Florida twice with Biden, participating as well in virtual events for the campaign. She was also formerly the national campaign co-chair for Barack Obama's 2012 re-election. She is the co-founder of She Se Puede, an organization aimed at fostering a community for Latinx voices. And after a very busy weekend for many, I'm thrilled that she is our guest. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. You know this expression, when someone's the face of something? Uh, for a lot of Americans who are not following every, you know, who's the lieutenant governor, who's the deputy campaign manager, you are a well-known and, and trusted, and I, I think it's fair to say, a very popular face. You became uh, the face of that convention at this time of peril and the virus, uh, and you were out there on the campaign. So first, just how are you feeling, your thoughts about this uh, tonight? Oh, my, well, I can't even express them, the, the amount of relief that I have felt, just like all the, you know, um, pictures and video you were showing. It wasn't just... Uh, America, the world is celebrating. I feel like I can breathe again. I feel like my my shoulders have relaxed. We have a we have a leader, but you know we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do moving forward. And I um, I'm just I'm excited that you know democracy won. We we have to remember that we have so much more in common than that which divides us. And I think you know uh, Biden's speech really summed it up really great when he said it's time to put away the harsh rhetoric. we got to listen to each other again. Because uh, at the end of the day, we all want the same thing as Americans. Hmm. Was it hmm. important to you? <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. No. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> Were you humming to my hmm? Is that what was going on? I was I was doing that because I felt like you didn't agree with me. <laughs> No, no, I was humming an agreement, but you're an actor, so you're so empathetic, probably naturally, well, hardwired. You're just going off the, the sound and the vibe, even through our, you know, remote. Um, but no, I was gonna, I was gonna take that and say, but how important was it to understand Joe Biden as a person? Because you just talked about what what brings us together, and certainly yeah. decency brings us together. Um, we were talking earlier about what Dave Chappelle said last night, relating to MAGA supporters and police officers and others, um, because he says, well. Let's try to empathize. And we've, we've lost some of that. A lot of people say we've lost that partly because of the way Donald Trump has driven the conversation for four years. Was it important to you, yeah. as such a supporter of Joe Biden, that his decency seemed to come through? Oh, my gosh. Of course. Character matters. Who is in the room where it happens matters. There is a lot going on in the world right now, and we need to pick a leader, not a liar. And America chose that. Uh, you know, and I, you know, I being part of... of uh, many campaigns, uh, you know, there wasn't one more important than this one. And, you know, we've been we've been saying how long you've mentioned it on your show right before the break. Uh, you know, he has a lot of a lot of people to thank for this victory, mostly 
people of color, the black and brown yes. communities delivered for Biden. And, you know, we've been saying all along that the path to the White House ran through the Latino community and Latinos turned out in record numbers across this country in states where it really mattered. And I I feel like uh, because Florida was the first state to come in that night, the the narrative t took over that, uh, you know, Latinos showed support for, for Trump. And that just isn't true. And it's not it's not the narrative that needs to be out there. Uh, Latinos delivered big for Biden. Latinos flipped Arizona. No question. You know, Latinos delivered Nevada, uh, you know, and then we had historic victories in Wisconsin, Pennsylvania and Michigan because of Latinos. And so Latinos were uh, a cornerstone to winning this election for Biden. Well, you know the, the usual problem with the political media narrative. What? It, it's, it's wrong and stupid, usually. <laughs> well, you know, we've long said, I think what this election really proved is that the, you know, the Latino community is not monolithic. We've known that, uh, you know, and the election really, really showed that. So many of those headlines that came out that first day just just weren't true. If you looked at Florida, um, you know, uh, Biden got the same amount of Cuban votes as as Obama did. Uh, but he got 71 percent of Puerto Rican votes in Florida. Uh, but the real headline was the turnout from unexpected parts of, of the United States, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, not to mention Texas. As a Texan, for the first time in decades, we were talking about Texas going blue. And that was exciting for me. Uh, you know, Texas is a large Hispanic population. It's a young population. And within Texas, the Latino vote was 70, 75, 80 percent for Biden in majority Latino precincts, Dallas, yeah. Houston, San Antonio, Austin. So it's, it's overwhelmingly clear that Latinos of all backgrounds supported Biden. Well, and part of what you're doing right now and what we've been endeavoring to, to do in some of our reporting tonight is we're talking about the fuller picture of the numbers, some still outstanding in mm -hmm. certain places, including New York, but the fuller picture, which if everyone got that on Tuesday night at 9 p.m., what you just walked mm -hmm. us through, the huge margins mm -hmm. I walked through in the last segment, uh, the power of young voters and particularly a diverse coalition and, and really co people of color, but specifically women of color, putting Joe Biden over yes. the top and what that means. If that all yeah. just exploded along with you know, a, a clear electoral vote margin a, a Tuesday night, that might have sunk in. Instead, we had a lot of other stuff between then and now that doesn't really matter. And so I, I wonder what you think about that, because going forward, yeah. this is also about power. And does the Democratic Party understand why it's back in power? Yeah, I think I think you bring up a good point. I mean, I think, uh, you know, campaign financing needs to be looked at. I think the way in which we campaign, there were so many false ads in Florida in Spanish. Spanish wasn't regulated the same as in English. And so uh, I do think we need to take a look at that. Again, our, our work is just beginning. But I want to talk about what you just said about the women. The women of color showed up in big ways. Of course, you saw uh, in Georgia, what what uh, uh, black women have done, but the Latina women were the real heroines here, beating men yeah. in turnout in every state and voting for Biden Harris at an average rate close to three to one, and and that wasn't surprising to us. You know, Latinos are the CEOs of the households; they make all the financial decisions and healthcare decisions and educational decisions. Many Latinas are small business owners, and they wanted a plan for recovery um, for themselves, not for Wall Street. And so Trump's policies were never aimed at the struggling Latina community. And, you know, if you look at voter suppression on top of that, how Latinas showed up, even through through the closing of polling places and the shutting down mm. of drop off sites and new voter ID laws and long lines and driving 30 miles and and all of that. And on top of that, restrictions and safety protocols of a, of a pandemic. That spirit and perseverance that, that Latinas use in their daily lives, the struggle to pay their bills and the struggle to show up to their jobs and homeschool their kids and take care of their elders, that's the same perseverance and spirit they use to show up at polls. Yeah. I want to play one more, one more piece from the DNC where, again, people remember you so much. And this was from uh, 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 Braden Harrington talking about how Joe Biden helped him uh, personally. Take a look. Yeah. Without Joe Biden, I wouldn't be talking to you today. About a few months ago, I met him in New Hampshire. He told me that we were members of the same club. We, we, we stutter. It was really amazing to hear that someone like me became vice president. He's talking now about the president-elect. Can we have more of that? Can we have more kindness? Yeah, I have. Um, 
you know, as a as a sister of a special needs person, um, that moment, not only that moment, but the moment, um, there's so many moments that uh, a character matters. That was one of them, of course. But the moment when Trump made fun of a disabled person, that, to me, just stabbed me in my heart because it reminded me of all the bullies in my sister's lifetime who made fun of her. And he was one of them. He was one of them. He's the leader. He was the leader of this country. And so when I saw that little boy say, you know, that mattered to him, Biden changed his life. Biden's going to do that for all Americans. Hmm. <laughs> well, it's been a long road for you. I appreciate you sharing them with us. How are you feeling? Uh, <laughs> seems Look, like an emotional I, night I, for good reason. It, it was. It was. It is an emotional night. And I think that, um, we, like I said, we, you know, we have a lot of work to do. The fact that we had a historic voter turnout on both sides is a positive sign <laughs> to the health of our democracy. And so when you're making voting more convenient, it opens right. up democracy for all Americans. And I think that's right. the message we have to take away, you know, uh, when it's like, why are all these votes coming in? Because democracy is working. Right. So that, that well, gives me great, great joy and pleasure. I don't do predictions, but I wouldn't be surprised if they come calling on you for more conventions. Uh, Ms. Longoria, hey, thanks for I'm joining for us. I'm for hire. I'm for hire. Great. You. And we, we will be right back with our special coverage. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here. Or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.